Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with a chatty kind of video where I tell you about some of my plans for the rest of 2022 reading wise and channel wise and yeah just have a bit of a catch up basically it's not quite a cup on a catch up because that's more like what's just happened what is happening what's coming up this is kind of more a sort of I've been thinking a lot about like my reading and where I'm at with the channel and all those kind of things. And I think there's a tendency, I notice it in the tone of my voice there, that it gets me like, oh, I'm thinking about all this and I'm slightly embarrassed about it. And I know Jalen did a really good video on it where he was saying it's quite hard because you're being a bit vulnerable and a bit kind of open to any comments and anything. I mean, you do like that with any video you make, but what I mean is, I suppose, there's something about like you don't want to come across as like you've got the world's smallest violin and you're feeling sorry for yourself because I'm not at all um I was over the last few weeks because I've had a blinking chest infection post COVID the return so when Miss Rona left oh she gave me the parting gift of that how nice that's toot toot to you sir or madam I guess during that time because instead of being traveling instead of being instead of me being traveling around Instead of me being travelling, that doesn't make any sense. Instead of travelling around the country and being all over the place, I am all over the place, instead of having been going on the tour with the libraries that I've been doing, I've been spending quite a lot of time at home or in isolation when I had COVID um, in an apartment, thinking about kind of where I'm at. And anything during COVID I'm going to ignore, because frankly during COVID, during me having COVID the return, I was crying at catchphrase on the telly. So that clearly I wasn't in a good mental space. I was a little bit weepy uh, before I came home with this chest infection. And that's how I always know that I'm not well is when I get particularly emotional about just random things. I'm trying to think of an example of what made me weepy when I was, I can't, I think it was people being nice to me um, when I was saying that I wasn't feeling very well. Anyway, move on, Simon. We've heard enough. In July, basically, I've only read two books so far as I record this and I'm recording this on Monday before this goes live and one of those books has really kind of made me think about my reading habits but also before we go to that and like how it made me think about what was going on with my reading I have been that ill and not reading it just really threw me because I thought when I was ill I, I always think I can read under any circumstances and I literally couldn't and I think it was in Jen's vlog where she was going through her shortest books on her shelf she was talking about how sometimes you kind of have to sort of get your way back into reading if you've not done it for a while because you can have it so that it's so much a part of your daily sort of life and um, when it stops and you fill it in with for in my case possibly any well mainly new york but um any franchise of real housewives that you've not watched yet or the latest episodes that you've missed plus a little bit of love island you do completely and utterly get out of the habit so i've kind of been thinking about getting back in the habit but also what sort of books i want to read what sort of a reader am i because i do think that we change as readers as we go and one book that really made me think about this was do you know dawson <laughs> Juno Dawson's Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which I read to do an event with Juno before I finally gave in to how ill I was feeling. I wasn't contagious, just put that out there. This book is not on paper, <laughs> well it is on paper, you wouldn't necessarily think, oh a fantasy book about witches, that's Simon's bag, but I really love this and partly that's because it's Juno's writing and I've loved all of the books I've read by Juno. I think I'm outstanding like three or four that I haven't read yet, but I'd like to have some to head back to because you never know how long it's going to be between any author's books, although Juno is prolific. Um, although I cannot wait for the sequel to this, it's going to be a trilogy, possibly more. Anyway, um, this book was so much fun to read, yet at the same time it was really layered and thought-provoking. It had loads of different themes around racism, uh, transphobia and um, it looked at uh, gender it looked at well just loads of things in society now but at the same time was this absolute delightful romp and has made me want to read a lot more witchy stuff I won't lie so if you have any witchy recommendations let me know in the comments down below I was going to say to save them for Halloween why do we always do that why can't we just read Halloween books all year I mean Summerween just happened actually I should have joined in with that anyway I digress as is my want this book there was like an epiphany that I had when I was reading it, which was, oh my God, books are fun. 
And I was thinking, why is that such a revelation to me? There's a thing, isn't there, I think, with books where we have the thing of like, it's all about the prose. And I have to say, this is brilliantly written and I've picked, which I'm gonna talk about shortly, five books that I know are gonna be brilliantly written and have a plot and be pacey and be fun and I'll just enjoy. But maybe it's more the enjoyment thing. And I'm not saying that I haven't enjoyed the books that I've loved this year. Like I, if I'm looking at my top three, um, and The Island of Missing Trees uh, by Elif Shvak, Violets by Alex Hyde, Blue Hour by Sarah Schmidt. I have to say, they all have quite big dark themes in, which is very much my kind of thing. And this book is extremely gothic in a lot of ways and does look at some very tricky subject matter. And I loved that. But it, it was actually also reading Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes, which is her retelling of the Medusa myth, that I was laughing and just having that like, real fun with it. And I thought, I don't do this enough in my reading diet, but also is my reading taste changing a little bit? And whilst this is all very retrospective and introspective and all those kind of things, it does lead to what I want to do going forward for the rest of the year. Now, there are things like the fact that I haven't read enough short stories and I want to make sure that I've always got a short story collection on the go. I'd like to read some non-fiction this year because I've barely read any. But again, they need to be books that I'm just really, really keen to read and don't necessarily feel I need to read. But it was interesting going back to Jalen's video that he did, and I'll link his video um, down below, where he was talking about sometimes, and I think it's all about being a public reader, although he didn't say that and I don't want to put words into his mouth. But when you are reading publicly, one, I, f I feel like sometimes we put pressure on ourselves to read what, no, let's change that. As a public reader myself, I find, I love the community. I love all the chat about books. I love hearing what you've loved. I've loved hearing what like you've loved that I didn't and what I loved that you didn't and having really nice conversations about it. I don't love the pressure that can sometimes be put on it. Like when I was saying, oh, I was in a reading slump, people went and said like, you've got to get reading time. You've got to get more stuff on your channel and you've got to do it. And I was like, I don't actually want any book recommendations at the moment. I'm very much, well, I was very happily ensconced in the dramas that were going on with Luan, Bethany and Dorinda and um, who else was, oh, just anyway, Real Housewives of New York. I didn't need any books necessarily and also like the shot when you say that you just don't want to read for a little bit or you can't read for a little bit but there is this also pressure of when you say what you're reading invariably and I've talked about this before people come along and tell you oh that was rubbish that was da -da -da, or but there's also a little bit of me that's like I don't want to be reading the same things as everyone else I want to be reading different stuff and I want to be going off and discovering new voices and then I can promote them on my channel because if I find new voices or books or anything that I'm passionate about then that's what this whole channel is about is enthusiasm and passion and all those kind of things but it can mean that I just forget about just reading and just going along. And sometimes I think I go into, it, it's something that I've said you, I have to stop doing and I am gonna stop doing and I have sort of been stopping doing because I haven't been filming as much, which we'll come to before we talk about what's going on going forward. Because so far it's all been retrospective and we're nine minutes in. Basically, I think subconsciously, I will sometimes be reading for the channel rather than the channel being a documentation of what I am reading. Now, I will say as well, in terms of reading, I have judged prizes, um, which has meant that I've had certain reading that I have to do. And actually at some points when I'm in reading something, I'm like, gosh, I wish I was back judging one because then I'd have dates that I need to read X, Y, and Z by. Um, there's been uh, obviously reading for Sky Arts Book Club, which I love um, and gives me books that I might not necessarily pick as well as some that I recommend. And I love that, but I feel like the freedom to read by whim, which is what I did before any of this started and I was getting back into reading as I was start doing my blog that I used to do, that seems to have gone a little bit. And so that I want to take forward for the rest of the year for the next five months, because I'm seeing the next five months as being a time where I can work out what my reading taste is, what direction I feel my reading is heading, um, are there certain books that I'm not getting to that I would like to, not just short stories and non-fiction, but like I don't read enough stuff in translation and when I do I love it. There are also lots of indie uh, print, uh, prints and presses that I really want to kind of find out more about and learn about. I was thinking about this when I went and visited a new bookshop on the Wirral near me. I mean, new bookshops, I just, I'm so excited when a new indie one turns up. Uh, we have a new one in West Kirby, which is one uh, run by the wonderful um, Jordan and Dan. And when I went in there, 
it was one of those joyful bookshops where it's so beautifully curated and everything, but also there were lots of books I hadn't heard of. And I was like, oh, and also lots of books where I was like, Simon, you really need to read that. People have been telling you to read that for ages. And so I kind of want to look in all of that. And what's exciting is um, I finish my current project, um, which is where I'm traveling around the UK over the next couple of months, which is harder to read by whim because you've got a pack for X amount of weeks while well, I should come home with COVID or a trust infection, which fingers crossed, touch wood, isn't going to happen again. Once that's over, I'm going to have um, sort of, well, possibly October, but definitely November and December to read what I want as it goes. I'm only going to be working one day a week for Sky Arts, which is slightly nerve wracking, but also fine. And I'm going to use that time and the time in the lead up to that to sort of get back to basics a little bit. And I mentioned filming and I filmed, so most of the videos you'll have seen in July were filmed in June because I bulk recorded before I thought I was going away from home for a month, little did I know. And then I think I've done two when I've come home on the two different times that I have. And that's meant that I think sometimes there's been one video a week, sometimes there's been two. But actually, I wonder sometimes if actually less content is more because I don't think so with that Instagram and I'd like to get better at doing more content on there. It's much quicker and easier and simpler. So it's not like, well, with most of my videos, to be frank, I just chat at you, go through the video, highlight the bits where I'm daft, take the beginning and the end off and job's done. That said, I would like to make less content, but I want to make not better content. Because um, I'll ask you guys, like, what would you like me to do on the channel differently? And you'll be like, oh, just keep doing what you're doing, which is great. And I am enjoying doing. But at the same time, I kind of want to push myself a little bit. And I've been thinking about that a lot in terms of like the channel going forward and what my plans are when I've got more free time. And I'd like to get better at editing and trying new things out. And that's just going to be fun for me. I did talk about a second channel. I think we can hold fire on that possibly until 2023. I just need to get this one sort of and my, my creative juice is flowing a bit more with it. It doesn't mean I'm going to suddenly do things totally differently, but I think I want this channel to be more than me just sat in front of some bookshelves holding books up, which weirdly are the videos that I love watching on other people's channels, but I do like watching other people dip their toe into other things and everything. So yeah, and again, that makes it sound like I'm comparing myself. And if I'm being honest, sometimes I do compare my channel with others. It's going to happen. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop watching other people's channels because I don't want to compare myself. But again, it's just about sort of finding a balance, but also finding my voice place space in booktube and kind of keep it building and going and all that kind of stuff uh, and by building i mean just like creating more stuff i'm not someone who's obsessed with numbers and all those kind of things because i think that can be unhealthy although like it can also be lovely like when you hit i think recently went over twenty six thousand. i was like what how did that happen i feel like i've got on so many tensions <laughs> my plans basically are i am getting rid of prompts apart from the prompts that my mum gave me because I'd like us to do that again next year but possibly make it a bit more structured and get more of you joining in but the prompts like for the one word prompt um places prompt that it just hasn't quite worked and ended up adding more pressure to my reading and I think I will say I'm hoping for I want a successful and busy and lovely 2023 I think this year when I've ended up sometimes working on four different projects at once it has been too much and I need to be better at sort of, well, possibly saying no sometimes, but also just, I, I wanted to make sure I had X amount of time for creating stuff for YouTube, freelance, etc. on top of having a part-time job. And I think the balance of that has gone a little bit. Um, but I mean, that's a very lucky position to be in and I'm aware of that and I don't want it to ever sound like I'm moaning. It's always a worry, isn't it, when you like, say to people, I'm just really busy and I'm quite tired at the moment. It sounds like you're moaning, but you're just saying that you're tired and busy when actually you're really chuffed and aware that you're in, it's like, I don't like the term lucky. It's not always because of luck. It's generally because you've been open to lucky situations, but worked your bloody arse off. Anyway, that's a whole different video, whole different subject matter. What am I talking about? So going forward, Come on, Simon, get on with it. My plan really is to not have that many plans. I've got some themed reading vlogs I'd quite like to do potentially, but I'm not gonna push myself on it. I've got um, various little ideas of things that I'd like to try when I've got more free time. So that's kind of, the in terms of the channel, I think it's gonna be two videos a week and we'll see how we go and we see how 
things work out and we'll test different things maybe as we go along. Although I really want to be doing more testing of new ideas over on my Patreon, which is always linked down below. And if you'd like to go and support me there, I appreciate that hugely, especially when I'm going to be unemployed. Well, certainly less employed come um, October, but no pressure. Uh, yeah, try it out more different stuff maybe there and have like better beta, not better, beta readers. No, beta viewers. There's no better viewers than all of you, but beta viewers, so testing out more stuff. Maybe get some new equipment so that I can try different things. I've bought a camera, I've not used that at all. I'm still using just my phone, which is no bad thing. I don't think people can tell that much of a difference, but just do something that I'd just like to try and something a little bit different and push myself and test myself because I'd like to do that. And then in terms of reading, really what I'm saying is it's going to be whim-ish because I do have some ideas for some themed reading vlogs I'd like to do and particularly in August um, when I'm away from the 5th until the end of the month I'm going to need to sort of pre-plan what books I want to pack obviously I'll be visiting bookshops and stuff along the way but that's where I think I could do a few that I've got kind of buzzing in my brain and then I think as we get to September when I'm just working Thursday to Monday or Friday to Monday depending on the different weeks maybe then I can sort of go back to more whim reads and then pack a few that match whatever whim I'm off on um, or just buy and read as I go because that'd be quite exciting although I do I really want to get through more books on my shelves not like to a point where I'm beating myself up about about not to the point where I'm beating myself up about I can't do it not to the point where I'm beating myself up about how many books I have on my shelves because I don't think that's healthy um but I mean it works with some people but I, I just, yeah, I would like to see that I'm getting through more because I am aware when I next do my sorting the shelves, I think I'm going to be pushing it and I'm not going to have that much space. So, but that's also because I've not been reading very much because to be honest, it wasn't just July. This year I've read less than I've read in a lot of years before. I'm not focusing on it because I don't want it to become like a thing or to be beating myself up about it because I read a lot compared, to, well, not a lot compared, say I'm doing that comparing thing. I read a lot, so I shouldn't be beating myself up about how much I read. There we go. Um, so yeah, so that's the plan. And what I'm planning on doing, that's the plan. I said there was no plan. It's going to be whimish. That is the aim. And we're just going to try a few different things, see how we go, read what we... I'm going to read what I want to read. I'm going to film what I want to film. I'm not going to be reading to create content. That's not the point. I might be doing that a little bit with Sky, but that's a whole different Sky Arts Book Club Extra, um, which is part of the Sky Arts Book Club Facebook group. If you'd like to go and check that out, please do. Uh, it's always linked down below. And you get an extra video of me a week when I'm not sick. Yeah, so that's kind of the plan. And I thought what I'd do to begin that, and this is going to be the next reading vlog I do, is as I'm going away this week, I'm off to Sheffield and Lincoln. Well, by the time this goes live, I'll be in Sheffield and we'll be heading to Lincoln in a couple of days. I have picked some books that are by authors that I love and are books that I've meant to read. And so I'm just going to check in and see, are these still the sort of books that I love? But also, I think the best way to get back into reading, as reading Juno proved, is to head to some of your favourites, um, where... In these cases, I know all five of these books will be really well written. They'll have fantastic characters, and characters is a big thing that I love. They'll have great plots, and I'll just want to keep reading. So I'm not going to do too much on them because it's going to be a whole separate vlog. I've got Bitter by Akwaki Ameze. I have The Night Ship by Jess Kidd, which I will say is a read for work. But with author events, I'm trying hard to... I'm, I'm, I'm being better at saying no to authors where I don't necessarily know if I'm going to love their books or not because it's taking me away from reading books that I really want to but then I would have naturally read Jess's book with or without us doing an event because I love her writing um, as I would Juno's. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyway, The Night Ship, I'm going to be taking that with me. The Dance Tree by Kieran Maud Hargrave. The House of Fortune by Jessie Burton and... I started this earlier this year and I can't believe I haven't read it still. And um, we meant to be doing an event but then it got cancelled, but we're hopefully doing one for the payback. Anyway, it's a tidy ending by Joanna Cannon and this is the proof. So that's kind of going to be my first little experiment, sort of one, get me back into reading. I think I caught it in a previous video when I was slightly delirious. Operation, get Simon fucking reading again. Um, but I'm kind of officially starting that now because I did try and start that in Blackpool. Didn't work, wasn't well enough. That's the aim, it's moving forward with some Authors that I know, I will, well, I'm, I'd say they're almost all five-star prediction books as well. So let's see how that goes. See where the mood takes me. 
see what's kind of ticking my box in terms of if I can do some, if I can pack some books for August that will have, excuse me, kind of themes going on. And um, yeah, film as and when. I hope that made sense. I feel like that was a little bit like therapy, but thank you to Jalen because he really, really made me think. And then so did Jen. Um, so thank you to Jen too. They don't know they've helped me at this time of sort of slumpy crisis, but they have. I have noticed it seems like quite, quite I have noticed it seems like quite a lot of people on Booktube are a bit funky. And I just wonder if it's just because we're all blinking exhausted from this pandemic, the fact that life has been so full on yet so oddly alienating and it's all just been really weird and that all feeds into this sort of, I don't know, I feel like I'm constantly waiting for a fresh start and keep saying, right, I'm going to start on you now and that's what I'm going to be doing, frankly, for, <laughs> for next month. I was going to say keep me accountable, but don't because, um, I think I just need to go off and read and see what happens and yeah, but I want to be better on Instagram, that's something that I'm definitely keen to do. I did start a Be Real because uh, uh, one of my friends is doing it and apparently it's something that all the kids are doing. I also have created a TikTok account but I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to doing that. We'll see, I might suddenly feel the need. Um, I was going to say that it could be something that I decide to do in one of the hotels or Airbnbs that I'm staying at when I've got time on my hands but invariably I've discovered so far I tend to start at 8.30, 9 o'clock and don't finish till 7 slash 8 um, and then go out for dinner with people. So I'm not actually getting that much time to read, which may be why I wasn't reading as much before. But I am aware that if I don't read enough, I get really cranky because it's really, really good for my mental health and it's something that I love. And um, yeah, so anyway, I guess it's all getting back to basics and just seeing where everything, well, where books take me. That's a nice way of looking at it. I'm just going to see where the books and the stories and the narratives take me and uh, I'll report back along the way. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know if there is anything you'd like to see on the channel because I might not necessarily definitely do it but it might give me some more inspiration or anything. If there's anything that you see on other channels that you love and stuff, not to steal their stuff, it's homage um, and there's only so many new ideas under the sun. Anyway, I'm waffling on again but um, I hope you're all doing super duper well. I hope you made it this far. If you did, Leave me a, I'm going to say shark emoji because I'm thinking of maybe having another sharky based holiday like I did in March at the end of September. We shall see. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.